Hello, today we will be discussing about geological processes that occur within the Earth. And one of those is metamorphism. What is metamorphism? Metamorphism is the isochemical process by which rocks are changed by either heat or pressure or both heat and pressure. The chemical composition of the parent rock will be the same as the metamorphic rock produced. Metamorphism comes from ancient Greek words meta, which means change, and morph, which means form. During metamorphism, rocks change because the minerals need to be stable under the new temperature and pressure conditions. Rearrangement of the mineral structure is needed for its stability. The ions may move between minerals to create minerals of different chemical composition. Metamorphism has its effects, namely alignment of minerals, change of color, destruction of fossils, beds, and sedimentary structures, growth of new metamorphic minerals, and hardening of the rock. There are agents of metamorphism, mainly the temperature and pressure. However, the fluid phase and time also affects metamorphism. Let us discuss them one by one. In metamorphism, as temperature increases, the rate of metamorphic reactions also increases. This is because heat is a requirement for many of the chemical reactions to take place. Higher temperatures increase the rate at which ions diffuse between minerals, though it is still a slow process because the ions have to move through solid rock during metamorphism. Ions diffuse more rapidly by water that speed up the process. High temperatures occur near to igneous intrusions where the magma heats the surrounding rocks. Temperature also increases with depth due to the geothermal gradient. If rocks are buried Within the earth, the deeper the rock gets, the higher the temperature it experiences, which is approximately 200 degrees Celsius. Folding and folding the rocks in the crust can move rocks to much greater depth than simple burial can, leading to higher geothermal gradient. Magma can also affect metamorphism. Magma intrusion subjects nearby rock to higher temperature with no increase in depth or pressure. Let us discuss pressure. Pressure is computed as the force over area. Pressure is a measure of the stress, the physical force applied to the surface of a material. It is defined as the force per unit area acting on the surface in a direction perpendicular to the surface. Pressure steadily increases with depth. The higher the pressure, the greater the degree of metamorphism. Reactions that depend on pressure only are less common than temperature-dependent reactions. Pressure is applied on rocks in many ways. The pore pressure, load pressure, or tectonic stress or pressure. Pore pressure is the pressure applied by fluids between the grains in a porous rock. The presence of water speeds up reaction by acting as catalyst and increasing the rate and ease of ion exchange. Load pressure is the weight of overlying rocks and physically brings minerals into contact with each other over very long periods of time. Tectonic stress or pressure is caused as the rocks undergo folding or faulting and very high pressures are exerted, but usually 
over relatively short periods of time. This image shows the difference between a dry regolith and a saturated regolith. Here, you will see that pressure is exerted downward. However, in a saturated regolith, this blue image shows the fluid and if fluid is added to the regolith, it becomes saturated. Therefore, the pressure is exerted in different directions, like what you see in this image. This second image shows the load pressure, wherein loads are added to the top of each of the layers. Therefore, in this layer, the lowest portion, this experiences the greatest pressure. And this layer, the topmost layer, experiences the least pressure. Tectonic stress or pressure. Let us consider this image. So you will see in this portion, there is folding because pressure is exerted from this direction and also from this direction. Here, it experiences stress. And also here, wherein faulting happens, this area also experiences stress or pressure. So, tectonic stress or pressure will happen and later on, metamorphism will occur. Another agent of metamorphism is the fluid phase. It is any existing open space between mineral grains in a rock that can potentially contain a fluid. This fluid is mostly water with dissolved ions. The fluid phase is essential because chemical reactions that involve altering a solid mineral into a new solid mineral can be greatly speeded up by having dissolved ions transported by the fluid. If chemical modification of the rock takes place as a result of these fluids, the process is called metasomatism. Lastly, time is also an agent of metamorphism. Most metamorphism of rocks takes place slowly inside the earth about millions of years to occur. Pressure and temperature conditions that produce metamorphism must have to exist over long periods of time to create a reaction. It was suggested by the experts that the sizes of the mineral grains produced during metamorphism increases with time. Thus, coarse-grained metamorphic rocks involve long times of metamorphism. Now let us talk about grade of metamorphism. Metamorphic grade is a general term for describing the relative temperature and pressure conditions under which metamorphic rocks form. As the temperature and pressure increases on a body of rock, then grade of metamorphism increases. Low-grade metamorphism takes place at temperatures between about 200 to 320 degrees Celsius and relatively low pressure. This is characterized by an abundance of hydrous minerals or the minerals that contain water in their crystal structure. Example of them is clay materials, serpentine, and chlorite. Medium grade metamorphism takes place at approximately 320 to 450 degrees Celsius and at a moderate pressure. Examples are Muscovite, biotite, and garnet.
High-grade metamorphism takes place at temperatures above about 450 degrees Celsius. Micas tend to break down. New minerals such as hornblende will form, which is stable at higher temperatures. However, as metamorphic grade increases to even higher grade, all hydrous minerals, which includes hornblende, may break down and be replaced by other higher temperature non-hydrous minerals. One example is pyroxene. Previously, as we discussed the types of rocks, we already discussed about the textures of metamorphic rocks, but let us review them. Foliated metamorphic rocks have a layered or banded appearance that is produced by exposure to heat and directed pressure. They have significant amount of sheet silicate, which appears to be platy minerals and are classified by composition, grain size, and foliation type. On the other hand, non-foliated metamorphic rocks, these are the rocks that have no evident planar fabric or foliation crystallized under conditions where there was no differential stress and are comprised of minerals. If you are wondering how metamorphic rocks become foliated or non-foliated, well, here are the influences. First, the pressure. Foliated rocks are formed if the pressure applied to the recrystallizing rock is unequal. The force on the reforming rock must be strong and one directional. However, for a non-foliated rock, it will be created if the pressure applied to the recrystallizing rock is equal all over. The textures for non-foliated have banded minerals. The mineral flakes will appear to be parallel to the rock and will look layered. When a foliated rock breaks, a thin rock fragment will result. However, for a non-foliated metamorphic rock, the minerals will appear to be randomly oriented without obvious banding and have a granular appearance. Unlike a foliated rock, there will be no layers and they will not flake apart into thin layers when broken. The composition of the rocks also affects whether the metamorphic rock will be foliated or non-foliated. Foliated rocks are most often formed from mudstones and contain fine-grained or platy minerals that are usually too small to see with naked eye. Although some can be seen without aid, examples of foliated rocks are slate, pilite, and schist. On the other hand, non-foliated rocks contain more coarse-grained minerals and generally have a random shape. Because of this, these rocks are very granular in appearance. Examples of non-foliated rocks are quartzite, marble, and anthracite coal. Here are examples of metamorphic rocks. The slate, it is a foliated metamorphic rock and it was formed from metamorphism of shale. Phyllite is also foliated and is formed from metamorphism of slate, but under greater heat and pressure than slate. Schist is still foliated, often derived from metamorphism of claystone or shale, metamorphosed under more heat and pressure than phyllite. And lastly, gneiss. It is also foliated. Metamorphism of various rocks under extreme conditions of heat and pressure. Hornfels. It is a non-foliated metamorphic rocks and it is 
form from contact metamorphism of various different rock types. The quartzite, also a non-foliated metamorphic rock, and is formed from metamorphism of sandstone. The marble, a non-foliated metamorphic rock, and formed from metamorphism of limestone. And metaconglomerate is also a non-foliated rock and is formed from metamorphism of conglomerate. There are two types of metamorphism, the regional metamorphism and contact metamorphism. Regional metamorphism occurs over a much larger area. Regional metamorphism is caused by large geologic processes such as mountain building. This is commonly associated with convergent plate boundaries and the formation of mountain ranges. Because burial to 10 km to 20 km is required, the areas affected tend to be large. Regional metamorphism usually produces foliated rocks such as gneiss and schist. Contact metamorphism occurs when magma comes in contact with an already existing body of rock. When this happens, the existing rock's temperature rises and also becomes penetrated with fluid from the magma. The area affected by the contact of magma is usually small from 1 to 10 kilometers. Contact metamorphism produces non-foliated rocks such as marble, quartzite, and hornfelt. Now, let me ask you a question. How are metamorphic rocks used by people? Second question, why do you think most of the metamorphic rocks are used as roofing, tiles, and building materials?